Tom Mary has built a strong, you know, repertoire of roles throughout the centuries. How did she manage to be so influential in our Catholic faith? Well, as a matter of fact, first, first, you will be surprised to discover that there is very little information about her in scripture. Konti lang talaga ang kwento about kay Maria sa scripture, pero pag titignan nyo ang ating buhay ngayon, parang si Maria ang kabuuan ng ating Biblia. Okay. For example, Paul doesn't even mention her name. If you look at the letters of St. Paul to the Corinthians, Thessalonians, Ephesians, the Romans, you will never, you never hear the name Mary. Luke and Matthew mention Mary, but mostly in the infancy narratives in chapters 1 and 2 of the respective Gospels. Okay. And the, if you look at Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 114, Luke wrote the Acts of the Apostles. You know, Mary was named among the first believers assembled in Jerusalem together with the apostles. And they were waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Okay. John gives prominence to Mary. But John's gospel is appreciated as a theological reflection rather than a narrative account of the life of Jesus. Then we have the so-called Didache. You know, these teachings of the 12 apostles, they call Didache, early community Christians, they never mention of her name. So my question is, how did Mary manage to be so influential in our Catholic faith? Well, as a matter of fact, there is very little information about her in scripture. Mary is even, you know, central in our Christian tradition. For example, devotion to her has become central in the spirituality and the arts okay, of the Catholic tradition. You know, uh, frescoes of Virgin and Child, Madonna and, you know, Piet, Pieta, you know, this iconography. Mary inspired great artists like Leonardo da Vinci, Botticelli, Raphael, and Monching de Guzman, joke lang. <laughs> If you look at the stained glasses, windows, statues, paintings, they depict her beauty, especially in the stained glasses of Notre Dame de Reims and Chartres, ah, which were built in her honor. Okay? Prayers, hymns, devotion, feasts have been composed in her honor. Famous is the most Mother of Perpetual Help, which we, we are more into than the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Right? And the Rosary, which we pray not just for this month, but also almost every day for some people. Now, I ask you, can you count the number of days Mary is honored in our liturgical year? Can you count it? There's just too many. Okay? Churches, cathedrals, religious orders, confraternities. Even holy years have been named after him, Mary the Queen Parish, Our Lady of Peace, in Elsa Shrine, etc. Her lit litany, you know, addresses her under a variety of names, you know, Virgin of Virgins, Mother of Sorrow, Mother of Divine Grace, Most Merciful, Queen of Heaven, Ginawa pa nating salamin, Mirror of Justice. I don't know where we, these are not all written in the scriptures, okay? So, We also thank God for her. We pray for her intercession. Okay? We are deeply rooted in our, I mean, we are, uh, what they call this, we, we trust in her capacity to bring our prayers to her son. You know, we should not forget that Mary is not God. He is human like us, except sin, because he was conceived without, he was immaculately conceived, right? And she was. You so, about uh, these she, countries. she cannot. She cannot give us anything, but she can definitely bring our intentions to her son. Okay? And we believe that being the mother, the son will not refuse her. Okay. So, Mary continues to live in the Catholic soul, Christian memory, culture, and there are many stories and legends about her. There are many places believed to have married appeared, like Lord Lourdes, the Fatima, Medioborne, Guadalupe. We also have our own version here in 1993. Remember, Agu, Agu, oh, Agu, Agu? <laughs> What, how do you say that? This 12-year-old Judiel, remember Judiel? 
who said that Mary appears every first Saturday of every month. We have also our famous Lipa, etc. Okay, but I still have to see, you know, uh, Jesus appearing everywhere else except in Jerusalem. <laughs> okay, so uh, but there are Marian places. So Mary remained a very strong religious symbol and enduring power in the Christian imagination. Remember Edsa Revolution? Mary was the mediatrix behind the success of that bloodless Edsa Revolution of 1986. See, there is not a parish in our country, in our church, where it's not adorned with stature, pictures, or even honor in honor of Mary's name. But Mary is always, always reflected as meek, Timid, demure, with eyes downcast, resigned expression. See, that is Mary, meek and mild. And yet Mary is important in our church. And we can clearly see that she has a place of prominence, not just in our parishes, our church, but in our personal lives. Okay? So that is Mary. Now, how did Mary manage to be so influential in our Catholic faith? given that there's less about her in scripture, but more in our tradition? How? And I guess my answer to that, because Mary was meek by God. Meekness was her, her spiritual muscle, which inspires us no end. You know, meekness is something most of us have trouble with both male, female, gender. Meekness is not something that has ever been taught to us. Why? Because, because especially in civilizations where we are strong in rights, freedom, and justice, you, know, you cannot be meek. We even say, some even say that VP Lenny Robredo will never make a good president because she is so meek. Meekness is associated to like a habit of acting shy or submissive. Big person cannot even ask their boss for a raise in salary or ask permission to take a leave. Those are the meek people. Meek people cannot speak up for themselves. They always defer to the people with louder voices and stronger opinions. They are spineless. In other words, they lack strong character, indecisive, wishy-washy, and sure disposition, deficient in spirit and courage. Okay. The meek, the, there was even once upon a time only associated with women, just like the bagyo, diba? and feminine qualities, soft and gentle. Okay. I think there is another reason why men and women have so much trouble with seeing meekness. Okay. Remember, throughout you, our history, we have to be aggressive and assertive to survive. Extremely passive men and women do not make very good providers, protectors, and leaders. At least that's what this world thinks about it. See, under the culture of passivity, passive, passivity, passivity, you know, ordinary people are bullied into silence. That is why meekness is never perceived a quality of the strong. And yet Mary is meek and influential. See, what is in Mary's meekness that made her influential? You know, I tried to study the word meekness. The word meekness comes from the Greek word praus. You know, praus. I discovered this. The word praus was borrowed from a military word and relates to horse training. It's a military word. I don't know if you've thought about that. The word praos is borrowed from a military, from the military and relates to force training. Okay. Borrowed from the military and relates to force training. Let me explain this. You know, the Greek word, this Greek word, praos, was used to define force train for battle. You might remove that, not that one. Okay. So, there was a time where, where, where wild stallions, you know, were brought down from the mountains and they were broken, tamed, and trained for battle. Okay. Wild stallions were used for, 
either to pull wagons, some were used for racing, raced, and the best were trained for warfare. Okay. They retained the horses, they retained their fierce spirit, their courage and power, but were disciplined okay, to respond to the slightest nudge or pressure of the rider's leg. See, you see that? The horse does not, did not lose its fierce spirit, courage, and power, but they were disciplined at the slightest nudge of the rider's leg. Okay? Parabang, parang tayo, just because we are patient does not mean that impatient does not exist anymore. Parang ganun, just because the horse is tamed and if, therefore it's not any more fierce or it's not courageous or powerful. Okay? So, these horses, they were trained to gallop into battle for 35 miles per hour, but they can come to a stop at a word. Some word, stop ka agad, even if they run at 35 miles per hour. So they were not frightened by arrows, spears, and torches. So this is what happens to wild horses. And when they, they are already disciplined and, and, and um, tamed, they are called, they, are, they were said to be meek. To be meek was to be taken from the state of wild rebellion or from their nature and made completely loyal to and dependent upon one's master. That's meekness. Okay. Taken from and made completely loyal to and dependent upon one's master. You know, you listen to these words. As I, we try to look up into the, where, where meekness came from. Isn't that also reflect who Mary was? I'm not saying Mary was a wild horse, but remember Mary is human like us. He can also say no to God. He can make her own decision. Remember that. Do not forget that. Even if she was conceived without original sin, but just like us, we were freed from our sin, but we were never able to meet the wildness in us so that we can retain the sinless, the, you know, our freedom from sin. Okay? The, wars, the war force had power under authority, strength under control. That's Mary. Okay? A war horse never ceased to be determined, strong, and passionate. Mary is seen. Determined, strong, and passionate. That's the meekness of Mary. Imagine Mary walking with her son to his death on Mount Golgotha. She must have a lot of power under authority, strength under control, determination, and this passion to walk with her son. See? The horse learns to bring its nature under discipline. Human nature needs discipline. And we need discipline. You know, it gave up being wild, unruly, out of control, and rebellious. Likewise, we need to give up our being wild, unruly, and out of control, and outbursts. See, a war force learned to bring its nature under control. It would respond to the slightest touch of the rider. Do we respond to the slightest touch of our God? Mary did that. It can, it can stand in the face of cannon fire. How do you face pandemic nowadays, my dear friends? Some are getting hopeless and helpless. Okay. Thunder into battle, but stop at a whisper. When you're mad, what and who can restrain you? Who can calm you? Okay. See, a war horse stallion was made meat. Mary was meet by God. That's why he is so, what they call that, edifying to us. You know, in Jesus' time, there were two described, no, no, two in the Bible, pala, two in the Bible described as meek. That was Moses and Jesus. Remember Moses reacted out of his own anger and at injustice, he even got to a point of killing an, Egypt, an Egyptian. Then he fled Egypt in disgrace. But he came back meek by God, 
bearing God's message for to Pharaoh. When he returned, he was he still have his he still have his uh, what do you call this his outbursts and anger, but this time it was meet by God. In Matthew, we we hear Jesus quoted a saying to him of himself, "I am meek, proud, and humble in heart." Okay, humble in heart. Moses and Jesus submitted themselves to God. Their strength, their power, their authority, under the perfect control of God. Neither has been described as simply push over, softy, easy prey, easy target. See, I think Mary was strong because he had this. Uh, he has this strength that was meek by God. In other words, he know how to use, how to be aggressive and assertive when necessary. She was a woman of God, meek by God. Remember the story of the presentation in the temple. Then Jesus, when Mary said, "Anak, but ka hindi, but mo ginawa ito sa amin," and then sabi ni Jesus, "Mother, don't you know that I have to be in my father's house?" Ano sagot ni Maria? Hindi ko alam. May iba ka na pa ng bahay na object din naman. He said, "So Mary just kept quiet about it." And in that Cana incident, when people, when uh, well, the party, they went to Mary and asked for wine. And Mary did not say, "Okay, fill the jar. I'll, try, I'll, I'll, I'll make it into wine." He said he went to her son, and then ang sabi ng anak niya, "Mary, what, what, what is that to you? My time has come." Okay, so Mary knows her place. Kung tayo pa yan, and then sinagot tayo ng ganon, ano ang reaction? Okay, see, there is this wild horse within us that needs to be meek. See, if Mary managed to be influential, it is because Mary showed to us how to be meek by God. She was a perfect example of power under authority, strength under control, determined, strong, passionate, in a soft and gentle way. See, these are two opposites. Determined, strong, passionate, soft, and gentle. In this world, it's either you are here or here, but Mary, it's both. That's why Mary is very, very inspiring. She's not assuming being the mother of God. No, she wasn't assuming. She was always willing to submit his will to God. She was calm and composed in the face of commotion. Okay, hindi siya parang uh, she does not get elated or easily frustrated by situations. But she spoke and act with gentleness. She never jumped to her defense, but patiently allowed God to vindicate her. She was teachable, willing to learn. Okay, and how was she able to do this? By the power of the Holy Spirit, she was able to have a heart and a mind in the ability of God. Okay? So her limited worth. This is a. This is what is very very. Uh, Inspiring about Mary because her limited worth is always compared to God's unlimited worth. That is why the reason we honor her as a perfect model of the church. Okay, Mary meekness is Mary's spiritual muscles. He did not teach us lectures about this, but by her life, he explained it to us in a more concrete way. So. That is Mary. Um, Mary has her freedom, and she could have like make her own decisions, but she allowed herself to be meek by God. That's why she's a very good example to all of us. So I'd like to end there and pause, so that we can reflect on this word meekness. Okay, I'd like us to reflect on our lives. We have maybe can we have a wild horse within us, whatever that is, that's for you to determine. There is always this wild horse within us that we need to submit to God to be made meek. What are this? What are feelings? What feelings, 
thoughts and actions do I have that I need to bring under control, submit to God, so that like Mary, I will always be calm and composed in the face of commotion. See, again, I repeat, we all have this wild force within us. Okay, we get angry, we get frustrated, disappointed. Okay, so this there is this wild force within us that we need to submit to God to be made meek. What are this? What feelings, thoughts, and actions do I have that I need? to bring under control or discipline, submit to God, so that I, like Mary, I will always be calm and composed in the face of commotion. Reflect on the image of the wild horse. What energies or powers do we personally have that needed to be tamed? So that like Mary, we will always be calm and composed in the face of commotion. So we will now have our small uh, breakouts one point to reflect on, one point, share many experiences about it. That's the Ignatian reflection, okay? Nun multa sed mutum. So I'll give you now to our team for our short, uh, small group sharing. So thank you, Father Monch, for that uh, short but very powerful uh, sharing. Uh, May ikli siya sa oras, pero malaman, no? Puno-puno, uh, no? Uh, if we try to put it in a glass, nag-uumapaw siya. And I think what we can do right now is to really just stay where we are at and give, give ourselves five minutes to reflect on the question that will be flat, that is flashed to the screen right now. And after five minutes, um, you will be led to a breakout group. Uh, you will be uh, transported to the breakout group the team uh, is ready for that after five minutes and uh, you don't have to take anything just uh, stay relaxed and you will be transported into that breakout group in five minutes and in that breakout group you will be given 20 minutes to share i think there will be four or five of you sharing in that group about this question that father monch has posted for us to reflect and then afterwards we will be we will be bringing you back here in the plenary. So just very important, uh, we've assigned facilitators. Uh, so just please manage the 20 minutes um, that um, has been given us. So maybe five minutes uh, for reflection on this question, after which we will be brought into the breakout.
continue to wait uh, patiently as uh, we are fixing the looping. So just give us a few more minutes uh, and we will transport you quickly. Okay, we are ready to break it. And uh, once you are in your group, uh, the facilitator will introduce uh, herself and uh, 
you may you may also introduce each other. Um, this is a CLC event, but we've also invited our friends who have graciously joined us tonight. So we just make sure that um, we get to know uh, the other CLC members and at the same time, uh, the new faces that are joining our community. So once uh, we break into groups, the facilitator can begin. But if you realize that no one is beginning, it means that probably um, the, the, the assigned facilitator uh, did not make it tonight. So just anyone from the group can introduce themselves and begin self-manage the time. You have, I think, 20 to 25 minutes. So that's approximately four to five minutes per person to share. Okay? So uh, there's a reminder, when you get disconnected, kindly go back using the Zoom link provided and you will be reassigned to your group. Okay? So have a good uh, have a good sharing time. Roger, salamat po. Sige po, meron ko pong idagdagdag. I'll go next. Am I, this is Erica. Hello. Hi, hey. good evening everyone. I was with Kite, Atenaida, Lindsay, and Gigi. Uh, a commonality amongst all of us, the commotion that perturbs us in our day-to-day -day struggles at its root would be this uh, desire for control. Uh, it comes in many manifestations. For some, it comes as worry. For some, it comes as anger. It's For some, it comes as this feeling of not doing enough, being inadequate. And for some, it's this desire for certainty. So all of that at its root is this uh, desire for control. But um, the whisper of God that keeps us unperturbed uh, developing that meekness of Mary in our hearts is this constancy of devotion in our day-to-day -day, or at least the desire for it. And um, today help, today help rekindle that devotion and feeds that whisper of God that feeds the meekness and nurtures that meekness in all of us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Erica. You. Okay, Fanny? Hi. Uh, so in our group, uh, we had Ate Madel and Jean and Kenneth. So I think one uh, one of the points that one of the points and that was shared was that um, we we all are have our shares of agitation and worries due to the current pandemic. Although we are all slowly also adjusting to it, and. Uh, we also have our experiences. We need to work on uh, managing our feelings of frustration, sometimes anger. And uh, we also need to um, try to model ourselves after Mother Mary, wherein um, she is meek, but she is also strong. And uh, just as um, Mother Mary is able to somehow control, but I have that sense of control. I mean, it's a balance of the meekness and the strength. So we would like to follow Mama Mary's model. And uh, one, one point that was also shared is that uh, that image of the wild horse wherein it is broken, but it doesn't give up its strength. So it's a difficult process of brokenness, but uh, when the horse is broken, that is when it is also able to maximize its ability to serve others and to be helpful. So we also hope to um, move towards that direction of being able to uh, uh, apply no, the meekness in Mama Mary's model and uh, also to move towards trust. Like just as Mama Mary gave her fiat, her total yes, we hope 
to move towards that total yes, despite all the um, chaos we see in the world right now. We hope to be grounded in that fiat, in that faith. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much to all our uh, four sharers. Um, Nakakatuwa lang no kasi lahat lahat ng uh, nag-share and I I'm sure the other groups uh, would uh, say the same thing also na we're all going through this pandemic. Ang hirap no, marami tayong frustrations, marami tayong na things are not in our control. And what happened tonight is really to to see Mary as the continuous model of how to live even in the new normal, no? And how Mary is serving as an inspiration to all of us. And the big grace that we received tonight is that we remember this. No? Nabigyan tayo ng pagkakataon na maalala ito na, ay, ito nga pala, ito nga pala yung pwede nating, um, ito yung pwede nating gayahin. In, uh, all is not lost. Pwede, pwede pa tayong may, may magawa. And I'm very happy that Fanny brought uh, the idea and the metaphor of the image of the wild horse. No? Because remember, Uh, talaga pong si Father Munching ay isang hasyendero sa Cagayan de Oro. No? Kaya nga, wild horse ang kanyang image. No? Uh, tanging may pag na, may pag may may ari lang ng hasyenda ang makakapag-isip ng wild horse na image. So, Father Munch, back to you. <laughs> yeah, bangtay ka lang. <laughs> Para lang tayong nag-ignite dito, Jay. <laughs> As I've said, we have <laughs> natatawa tuloy ako sa wild horse. We have a wild horse within us that we need to submit to God to be made meek. Okay? And you have mentioned that uh, uh, we need our this wild horse as a panic, outlook, expectations of others, worry, anger, frustration, control, pride. You know? These are the wildness within us that needed to be meek. Every day, we need a spiritual muscle, which is meekness. Okay? We need our fears, our frustrations, disappointments, helplessness, and hopelessness, anger, to be meek. Why? So that we can discern, somebody mentioned that, discern well how to stay above the troubles we are in. Okay? You, cannot, you cannot discern when you are troubled and chaotic within, okay? So outbursts, for example, will destroy us completely. It will evaporate oceans and even burn forests. Ganun ka, ka inip yung outburst na yan. When you react, you let others control you. But when you respond, you are in control. Anger is a chosen response, okay? Frustration is a chosen response. You, and many other things, okay? Anger is like a wild horse inside us that needed to be meek. Peace in times of pandemic entails a lot of meeking. I hope you realize that today, especially since we're already tired where we are with what we're doing, it entails a lot of meeking. It is not really outstanding when you are standing wild. Remember that always. Okay? Socrates said, if you want to be a good saddler, Saddle the worst horse, for if you can tame one, you can tame all. Okay, so what's your worst wild horse? Tame it, okay, so that you can be gentle and kind, you know, like Mary in your everyday chaotic life. You know, there's this story some think, some think that the least watched moment during a TV program is when the commercial runs. You know, no, before when I, I watch a TV, if it's commercial, I go get some water or go to the CR. I don't watch it. But there's another moment that receives less attention than this one. You know, the credits that run after the program. You know, have you, have you ever, after watching a movie, sat until the last line of the credits are shown? No, we just stand up and leave the movie house. You know? Yet, I don't know if you realized it. it yet, if it weren't for the people whose names real across the screen at that moment, we wouldn't have any TV programs or movies at all. What's my point? Mary is like the credit moment on the television and the movies. She worked behind the scenes of Jesus's ministry journeys. She was behind the scene. Okay? 
And she was behind the scene in the spirit of meekness, which is not weakness, but a spiritual strength, harnessed for service to her son. She was behind the scene in Jesus' ministry in the spirit of meekness, which is power that knows how to submit to the will of God. She was behind the ministry of Jesus in the spirit of meekness, which is, which is passion guided by prayer. That is Mary. You know, there is last story, like to end with this story. There was this pilot. Of course, pilot, hindi nagda-drive, di ba? So flying the plane. And then at the middle of the flight, trouble. There was trouble with all four engines of his plane. So one by one, they were conking out. So the pilot, in panic, was mentioned in our, your sharing, called the tower, tower, control, tower, mayday, mayday. And then the control answered, Roger, we hear you loud and clear. And then the pilot said, I'm heading for a crash. All engines are down. Give me instructions. And then the control answered, Roger, okay. Repeat after me. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. You know, the Virgin Mary, is la her life was full of sorrow, but she was consistently calm and composed. For Mary, meekness is a spiritual muscle that can carry burdens with gentleness and kindness. Amen. Thank you very much for your patience and for your listening heart and ears and for inviting me tonight to reflect with you about Mary, Meek, and Mind. So let's wake up tomorrow and begin our openness to be meek by God. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po, Father Monch. Uh, Thank you, Ben. Give him uh, our virtual uh, clap. And if not, we can just put smiles on our faces para makita niya na happy tayo sa kanyang, ano, sa kanyang, uh, sa kanyang sharing tonight. You know, um, it's really, Father, I really miss you. This is how our lunch is uh, when we're at Savior School. Uh, we have 40 minutes and that's what he does. We eat and he talks, okay? And then we share, okay? And I'm very happy to say that two of our members of the of our team in Savior School Ignite is also here, you know, Michelle and Derek. So just a special Hello. shout out uh, to, to them. So, okay, uh, we were we will now uh, call on our president again, President Deer, to uh, give his good night uh, talk to us tonight, his good night message. So, Teodi, sige. Uh, yun lang, good night. Baka umalik sila ka agad, baka, baka mag-escape sila lahat. Ha? Okay, sige, go with you. Hindi, baka sisihin nila ako, wala silang time, more time to interact, di ba, at makipag-banding. So, I'll just make it short. Thank you very much no, for accepting our invitation and for the very inspiring talk, uh, Father Munch. Um, and also... Thank you very much to all the CLC and friends of CLC who are with us tonight. So may we continue this reflection and prayer and we also uh, baka yung, yung chance no, na to share this yung fruits of tonight's session with the other CLC members and your families and friends. So uh, on that note, we end tonight's session. But we also, before I end, I would like to also extend my gratitude sa ano uh, sa ating ma magigiting at masisipag na um, CLC uh, office staff na uh, palaging maaasahan na palaging session pang ilang session na natin pang sampu na ngayon in, in spite of the pandemic na dyan, sila sina Ange, sina Joy A, sina Jeff no and and the rest and also for uh, Joy B Bautista for ano for spearheading also on behalf of the leaders, national leadership community. So maraming maraming pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Okay po? So ilabas na po natin yung red horse at mag-inuman po tayo. Okay. Sige, <laughs> let's, po, 
let's formally close this before we bring out our red horses. Okay, so <laughs> Forget to attend our activity for uh, on November one. Uh, we have a four p.m. activity, pasasalamat and uh, re remembering Aterori and her life, a true uh, devotee of Mary, a follower of Mary. And we have a five o'clock mass for the dead. This is on November one. Okay, so good night, po, and thank you for. Hola, salamat lang. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Father Manchi. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. In the city. It's an office. It's open for up to 10 if they want to stay. Oh. Thank you, Joy. Oh, pag may nag-doorbell sa inyo, buksan nyo. Nandiyan na yung red horse nyo. Papasabay ko na. Pwede pa. You can still use the room. The link. Hanggang kaya. Ibon pala. Thank you din, Ibon. Ay, teka. Wala daw group pick. Tama. Buti na lang dito si Tina. Oo nga pala, Gupi. Marami na rin. Bawal ang mali. O, yan. Sino magpipicture? Ako ba? O, sige, ako. Okay, ready. One, two, three. Tingin kayo sa camera. Next. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tina. Ay, Tita Kara. Hi, Hi. Hi everyone. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, 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 Hi,
Ay, sa inyo, Joy, 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 Joy. Ay, ay, ano si Joy, mo. tapos na yung project, nagpapakita na. <laughs> ay, Gigi. Hi, Joy. Hi. I think Rojin is here, Rojin. From... Hi, Asher. Oo, oh, si Rojin. Hi, Donna Bell. Hi, Tina. Hi, Tina. Hi, Tina. Hi, Lance. Hi, Tiffany fans. Hi, Tito Lance. Hi, Tito Lance. Akala ko si Jody. Hi, everyone. Ano na? Hi, Bon. Hello, Tio. Hi, Andy. Thank you po. Hello. Hi, Tina. Joe. Albert. Hi, Tito Lance. Babay na. Pangatlong sum ko na ngayon. Hi. Say good morning. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.